Guys, welcome to another edition of Sales Wisdom Podcast. Today with us, we have Sergio Munoz. He is Vice President of BizDev at Debco slash HPG. Sergio, we're going to discuss um, video selling, social selling, and a bunch of interesting things. You just won a prize by PPI number 13 of video seller. 15, or 15. <laughs> 15 of video social, uh, video social seller, which is pretty cool. So we're going to discuss today what uh, what you need to, to do to get to number one. I've seen some of your videos. They're pretty cool. Um, you're pretty active on LinkedIn here, and uh, that's what we're going to discuss today. But before we do, tell us a bit more about yourself and tell us a bit more about Debco. All right. Well, thank you so much, Charles, for having me up. You you have such an amazing podcast. I follow you daily on uh, on LinkedIn, and I really enjoy your content. So it was an honor for me when you when you reached out and said, "Hey, maybe we, maybe there's a fit here." Mm. Uh, for me, I'm an energetic person who you know shows up every day and really tries to utilize technology so we can work smarter and not harder. And uh, in this time around in business development, I, I'd say one of the most lethal weapons out there is social selling. You can amplify your message times a thousand. Like if we were to do this meeting one-on-one, -on -one, you would hear my message. But if we turn this meeting into a video, then we can share our message with all of North America or the entire planet, extending our reach, allowing us and our sales teams to grow their market share and really connect with more customers. So that's really my focus these days. Hmm, agree. Uh, fun fact, just before you, my call was with one of my clients. Uh, they're an agency in Toronto and they make videos. Um, videos that are short, uh, powerful, and yeah, obviously infused with storytelling. What tips do you have for us to make impactful videos that will move people? What, what, some of the tips, some of the things that have really helped me in my career over the last two years in doing videos, I'd say the number one thing is authenticity. Mm. Be authentic. And don't create a video just for creating a video. What value are you bringing to people's lives? I use my videos to describe our products and services, show my customers how they can resell those products, what verticals to sell them into, what benefits and features they should be focusing in on. The last thing I want to show my clients is the expression that I get when I get a big order. You see a lot of videos like that on TikTok or, you know, I find those are great for humor, but when you're putting stuff on LinkedIn, you want to make sure that you're bringing value. You want to make sure it's authentic and it doesn't have to be super polished. Raw video right now, people are, are relating to it because it's authentic and they can see themselves doing that. So people relate to that quicker. Those would be my tips, authenticity and drive value. Make sure you're bringing value to someone's day. Don't waste their time when they're scrolling. Hmm. How do you go with video ideas? For example, I've been catching myself asking chat GPT uh, to come up with some video ideas or so, for some content ideas in my niche. How do you go with your schedule, your content agenda? Well, I fly pretty much off the hook with a, I don't really have a, a strict schedule that I follow. One of the biggest things that I've learned throughout my journey as a social selling is you got to capture the energy that's happening right around you. If I come into work and I'm thinking too hard about content, it means that I don't have any. But I have a print shop of 200 people that decorate products all day long. When I walk around there, I see magic happening. I'm, I'm focusing a lot on my new products or the energy that's happening within our workspace or when I'm out on the field. I always look for things that are happening in front of me, capture them. That way it's authentic, it's raw, and it drives value. If you and I sit here and, come, and try to come up with a creative idea, we probably could, but if it happens in front of us and we capture it, then I'd say that's the real value of videos. Love that. Yeah, I do pretty much the same, um, but kind of hybrid hybrid because yeah, sometimes my schedule doesn't allow it and I'm, I'm like, oh, this is a great idea. And sometimes I just plug in, I open my computer and the creative juices are just not there. And you know? I'm like, what, what should I do? And that's where the, the little list, I have a point form list, which is mm -hmm. somewhat chaotic. But yeah, I do like probably 80% of what you do, which is momentaneous and just, you know, opening the camera. The tool that I use to do that is Vidyard on my side. It's pretty bare bones. Um, I, I It films me, it films my screen and I can 
show people like some uh, valuable insights and so forth. What tools do you use to um, film your videos? I, I use a Logitech regular camera, a, a Logitech uh, microphone. My editing, that's where I really have enjoyed my journey as well as picking up skills like editing, adding pictures to words. And uh, there's a great little software called Myobi and uh, it's about a hundred bucks a year. It comes full of editing transitions and stickers and uh, video filters. It makes you almost an instant expert. But what I really love to do is when I'm describing a product, if I say that the product is red, I like to show red while I'm saying the word. Because hmm. that's the beauty of editing is matching my words to pictures and making that story a lot easier to digest for the end user. So simple equipment. The beauty of this in this day and age is you don't need to be Francis Ford Coppola. Because if you do that, then people expect Francis Ford Coppola quality and results. If you're raw and authentic and you bring energy and value, you don't need to be fancy. I agree. Yeah, you can compensate in other fields. Been checking at various tools myself, for example, for this podcast, the tool that can segment this podcast in various micro segments and publish them on YouTube shorts since YouTube has like more views. Been thinking about a bunch of tools also for editing because the goal is, yeah, to to do the 80% and leave the, the 20%, you know, like perfectionism away uh, as busy salespeople, you know, we don't have time to spend tons of hours on edits. Um, so I'm still looking for a tool to do some cool edits while, while not, you know, like spending tons of my time. I've also uh, been checking AI tools that can produce um, videos by themselves. Not sure if you heard about them. Um, but these can be quite interesting. You know, you just feed the, the AI the, the full video with the text and they they create a, a full video out of it. So I'm kind of eager to, to explore those. I'm curious also if you've been um, using videos on a 1v1 basis. So for example, the software that I talked about uh, earlier, Vidyard, uh, Loom is another option here. There's a bunch of sales reps. I, I think there's BombBomb as well. It's quite popular. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a bunch of sales rep. They send one view one videos uh, to their clients. You also do that. I've been working on a one to many ratio. So most of my videos are on LinkedIn. They're on Facebook. They're on Instagram. And I'm sharing them with the entire planet. When I do one to one, it's more when I'm talking directly to my team. I'll use Vineyard. And if I've got a list of things that I want to update my team on, sometimes it's easier to fire up the camera and be like, all right, everybody, let's rock and roll this week and really get the energy going. I find I'm a lot better with my words and my hands than I am with my keyboard. So Vineyard is a great tool when I'm talking to my team. But when I really want to get a message out there and grow my sales, I'm going one to many. And I'm trying to amplify that message as loud and as far as I possibly can. Um, if you're ever editing on your phone, there's a great little piece of software called InShot. It's about $54. And it's an unbelievable phone editor. And... Uh, it, it, it has some really sophisticated tools as well. Yeah. My wife, uh, she's a TikToker in Instagram. She used CapCut. Um, that's another good one. Um, when it comes to publishing on, on LinkedIn, how do you make sure that you reach your full audience? Is it hashtags? Is it pre-connecting with your leads so that they're in your, your contacts already sending them a message? What are your tips to get the most views from your targeted audience on LinkedIn? For me, it has been been qualifying my audience beforehand. When I started with LinkedIn about uh, two years ago, really when I started to pay attention to it, I had about 250 followers. I'm up to about 8,500 followers now. And the beauty of LinkedIn is that when you want to connect with people, it's almost like shooting fish in a barrel. Because when you go into the search, you can really isolate the companies you want to work with, the industries you want to work with. So I make sure every single week that I max out my invitations, you want to make sure you're adding a little note there, letting them know what kind of value you're going to drive to their lives by connecting with you. So once you've built up a nice network, add your video. Hashtags do, again, extend your reach and bring in people that you weren't expecting. And I definitely, I'll do some research on the side on hashtags, which ones are really trending on LinkedIn and making sure I add them to my uh, to my videos. I feel sales and marketing are more and more overlapping with time. Do you also expect your team, your your reps, your SDRs to post video and interact uh, on LinkedIn and be more social? Uh, is that part of their uh, expectations slash KPIs nowadays? 
No, but I, I definitely see that down the road because I've seen, you know, I started this as an experiment two years ago. Now it's a it's a huge part of my everyday life because I know that I can extend my reach. Um, I encourage my reps to, you know, to try to experiment with social selling. Again, because if you're traveling the same roads that you were before the pandemic, you're traveling a lot more because people are so spread out these days. You rarely walk into an office and get a full sales team. So if you if you love driving, stick to the regular, you know, stick to the traditional roads. But if you really want to grow your sales and you really want to amp up your career, then social selling is a way to do it. Why not? Why talk to, you know, why try to talk to everybody in one day when you can do one video and talk to every single person on the planet? That's there's a lot of value there, and you you can save a lot of time and money on and on gas. Yeah, if you're passionate about your what you do, you know, like in your case, it's uh, brandable items. I'd call it that way, which is probably not the ter term, but like swag, company swag. Um, yeah. Me, it's it's lead gen, you know, and I, I I call them like stunt videos because like me on every day I, I post like on the Monday what my lead gen pipeline looks like. Today, it's like 18 uh, meetings that uh, I've booked uh, this Monday. How could I improve these videos not to just sound like an arrogant uh, guy that is showing off? You know, how how could I I show my clients that? I mean, yeah, I sh it's, it shows them that it works, but I feel that it's kind of like look at me type of video. What what would you suggest I do to improve my Monday 18 leads <laughs> videos? Oh, man, results is really the results really drive attention. So if, if you could show your audience some of the successes that your clients have had by working with you, I would stop dead in my tracks and watch your videos because it's results driven. And I think that that would be the way, uh, you know, the flashy, the flash is good to grab someone's attention, but then you want to back that up. And the way I'd back that up in your case would be like, look, last week I worked with 12 clients. We've increased their lead retention by this much or whatever it is that you're doing in your industry, show the results and, and some, uh, some uh, testimonials as well from, uh, from, from clients that have had success with, with what, with the services that you provide, that definitely creates a lot of attention and, and keeps a lot of attention. Love it. Well, Sergio, thank you so much uh, for dropping these insights today. Where can people find out more about you? You can reach me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, or send me an email at sergio.munoz at hpgbrands.com. Thank you so much, my friend. I really enjoy your content. Keep up the great work. And uh, I'm always learning from you daily. So thank you very much.